आप सुन रहे हैं हमें सुनाई दे रहा है कैन यू हेयर मी जी सर जी जी सर विनोद वेर आर यू नाउ एग्जैक्टली सर आई एम करेंट इन बैंगलोर यू आर इन बैंगलोर बैंगलोर यू आर ऑलरेडी वर्किंग समवेयर नो नो सर आई वाज वर्किंग इन पोलिंग लिमिटेड देन आई रिजाइन टू प्रिपेयर फॉर सिविल सर्विसेज एंड फॉर यू रिजाइन एज यू आर वर्किंग एज इन द सेंट्रल आर्म्ड फोर्सेस यू नो सर आई वाज वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट मैनेजर इन पोलिंग लिमिटेड in uh, 2016 but i, I was see... selected as assistant commander in caa but i did not join ha uh, you were selected for central armed forces also yes sir but you did not go uh, sir, did i not... did not join i decided to also... go back and uh, continue you... my preparation for the you also resigned as assistant manager in coal india yes sir so two big sacrifices you have already made yes and that is speaks of your commitment to get into this service i believe so sir thank you this is the first time you are going for this interview yes sir this is the first time i am going for uh, for a service interview last year i went for civil service interview hmm. i see that you have got two class 1 services uh, at the risk of yes. getting into this service why did not you continue there and then try it a board in hand is better than two in bush definitely sir uh, that thought crossed my mind but uh, uh, since uh, my job in polling and in involved a uh, lot of uh, field work so it was uh, some uh, somewhere down the line it became somewhat difficult to sustain my preparation along with that field job and then i thought i was not able to do justice with my job so i thought of uh, concentrating more time on my field anyway i take this as your commitment for getting into this service thank you sir thank you your options were forestry and geology geology yes. geology but you have nothing yes. to do nothing to do with geology in your academic career Uh, in your academic career, you have never studied geology. Uh, no, sir. Academics. I have done uh, bachelor's uh, in engineering, in electrical. Electrical. But that was not a choice. Yeah, that's what surprises me more. That you have taken two subjects for optional. None of them were your part of your uh, academics. Neither forestry nor geology. Yes, sir. You are from Rajasthan, no? Yes, Rajasthan. Tell me some examples of metamorphic rocks found predominantly in Rajasthan. In Rajasthan, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Rajasthan's the eastern part is completely composed of the banded banded mesic formation. Uh, banded mesic complex uh, BGC, uh, which are uh, metamorphic rocks uh, going back to around uh, 2.6 billion years ago. Uh, as far as uh, the rocks which are commercially uh, I mean viable, we have uh, marble, which is a metamorphic uh, form of land, which is very famous in in my own district, that is Nagaur, Madhya. It's a big industry all over the country. Rajasthan is a supplier. Yes, sir. Rajasthan is a supplier. Yes, sir. And some example of igneous rocks from your own state. Uh, can I take a moment to think? Sir? Yeah, please. Okay. Okay, I need to read more on that. I'm sorry. The human wildlife conflict uh, these days, a important decision has been taken by Ministry of Surface Transport for 
creating corridor for the animals. You have any knowledge where it has been done and how effective it is? Sir, I, I do not know exactly where it has been done, but uh, if you allow me, I can take a guess. Anyway, what, how uh, effective it is? Any knowledge you have whether it is effective and how effective it is? Uh, sir, I have not read about it, but uh, I mean, in India, but uh, there is a corridor in Singapore and that has been very effective uh, for the movement of virus. There are two in the state where you are. To there are two in the state where you are presently, Bangalore. You are in Bangalore now. Now yes. pres presently you are in Bangalore. Yes. There are some around that area. I, I, I need more. Yeah, you can go and see that. What was the problem in Coal India thing? Coal India, you left it long back, 2016 yes. itself. Was it because of the remoteness of the area where you are working? Generally, assistant managers in Coal India will work in very remote areas. Is it because of that that you left the job? Uh, no, sir. Uh, that was not the reason to leave my job. Uh, the actual reason to leave my job was uh, I was starting civil services preparation and at the start you need some more, more time uh, to cover uh, such a vast syllabus and I was not getting that time in the field job, that is why I left. Otherwise that remoteness of the area was not, not even a factor. In fact, I, I enjoyed working there. Yeah. Yes sir. Uh, we know. Yeah. Three, four days back, the Honorable Chief Justice of India made a statement. A saw is given to a person to cut a piece of wood, but he cuts the entire forest. Have you heard of this comment, this statement of the Honorable Chief Justice of India? A saw is I'm given, sorry, I, a saw I, I, is I, I, given to a, a, a person, a carpenter, to cut a piece of wood, but he cuts the entire forest. In what connection did he make this uh -huh. forest analogy? Uh, I, I did not read this statement, sir. I did not come across this statement. He made this comment in respect to, with respect to 124A of CRPC, of, of uh, IPCs. That is oh. sedition law. That is, even though it was, it was meant yes. to deal with very few uh, obnoxious elements, but it is being applied to many people now. So in that context, while yes. giving that judgment, he made this. So this shows the importance of forests. That even the Chief Justice of India is giving an analogy from forests uh, in, a, in a completely different field. Okay. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Take care, take care. Thank you, thank you. And uh, how many tiger reserves India has? Uh, sir, India has uh, 53 uh, tiger reserves. 53? Uh, the biggest one being uh, uh, Ramgarh Bishkar in Rajasthan. 53 or 52? 52. 52nd, that is 52nd. Uh, sir, I could not hear you. The 52nd, the, India has got 50, 52 tiger reserves. Are you able to hear me? Sir, I, uh, I happened to come across this news item uh, where uh, Ramgarh Bistari in Rajasthan was declared as Ram, Ramgarh, Ramgarh Bistari, Ramgarh Bistari, Ramgarh Bistari, which was declared three, four days back, it was uh, officially notified yes, that the 52nd one, Times of India wrote. Yes, sir. Is, yes, is yes, it yes uh, a week back it was officially notified as uh, the where, where is it? Tiger Reserve. Where is that Tiger Reserve? Can you please repeat? I'm very where is, where is the tiger reserve? Working very fine. The Ramgarh Bistari Tiger Reserve, where is that? You are able to hear me? Sir, it is in Rajasthan. Yes, yes sir, I can hear you. But, uh, I suppose you are asking where is Ramgarh Bistari Tiger Ah, It is between two. It is between two. Uh, uh, the, um, the two areas. What, what are those two tiger reserves? 
Yes, sir. It is between the Ranthambore uh, Tiger Reserve and the Mukunda Hills National Park. Yes, yes. So thank it you, forms a sort of corridor. I, 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 you, you, you know, hobby you have given following international affairs. Yes. Uh, I can see that by the map that you have behind you, the international map that you have behind you. Yes. Okay, okay, that's very nice yes. to have the world map. But uh, you see, why, why Russia invaded Ukraine? Uh, sir, uh, Russia, according to Russia, uh, I mean, uh, it had two legitimate security threats. Uh, one was Ukraine joining NATO, uh, which was a violation of the Minsk agreement and NATO coming at the doorstep of Russia. And second was the unrest in the eastern part of Ukraine, that is the Donbras region, which was just, uh, which had the threat of spilling over to Russia. Okay. But, uh, but attacking, attacking Ukraine, <laughs> what it has resulted in, now Finland and Sweden, they are going to join NATO. Finland and Sweden are, are applying to uh, yes. join NATO now. So, yes. so well, apart from Ukraine, now Finland has got 1,304 uh, kilometers of border with, uh, with Russia. And that will double Russia's border with NATO, uh, with NATO countries. Now, how is the, 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 problem, the problem has aggravated for Russia? Yes, sir. The decision to invade Ukraine seems to have a backfired for Russia because now it has elevated the security threat of other neighboring countries and it has hastened the process of them joining the NATO. So, it has, in a way, uh, you know, it has backfired for Russia. Why, why Turkey is uh, uh, opposing uh, admission of Sweden to NATO? Uh, sir, it is uh, due to its uh, approach uh, towards balancing its ties with the West as well as Russia. Because in recent times, its relations with the West, especially the US and Europe, have strained due to non-admission into EU, then uh, the uh, expulsion of Turkey from the F-35 jet program, then buying sanctions on Turkey uh, on buying of X-400 missile system. So it now wants to balance its ties with West as well as Russia. And due to Russia's, Russia's opposition, Turkey is saying that we will have to study the proposal of NATO and then we will do it. But NATO takes all the decisions uh, uh, unanimously. Yes. So, so if Turkey that objects... Is even one member. If Turkey objects, can they become members of NATO? Uh, no, sir. Even if one member objects, uh, no country can become a member of NATO because the decision is taken collectively. Because then, then how these two uh, uh, are trying to become members of NATO when Turkey is objecting? Uh, sir, uh, I believe uh, they have uh, Sweden uh, released a statement yesterday that they have sent some very senior diplomats to Turkey uh, to try and negotiate and to learn more about the objections of Turkey and uh, they are letting diplomacy uh, take the way forward. Tur they will have to convince Turkey to get admission. Turkey said it is repenting allowing Greece to become a member of NATO in 1980. Why? Uh, sir, uh, uh, actually Turkey is having uh, that issue with Greece, uh, uh, multiple issues with Greece. Why? One is with respect to Cyprus. So, Greece uh, supports Cyprus against that. And the second issue is with respect to uh, last year, there was a dispute regarding oil exploration in the Asian Sea between Turkey and Greece. And Greece uh, uh, repelled some Turkish ship, uh, oil exploration ship from the Asian Sea. And that became a big diplomatic. Okay, okay. Now, Turkey cannot attack Greece because both of them are part of NATO, and that is why Turkey says that it is repenting uh, allowing Greece to be. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, Vinod, am I audible? Vinod, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, Swedish, Turkish, no, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pakistan Independence Army, they have given shelter to Am Greece. I audible, sir? Sweden. So they 
they have to give him yet fair excuse. That means he just said, okay. Yeah. Uh, the police said for the internet. <laughs> okay, that's the real reason. Yeah. Uh, Dunnath, what is your view on the issue of big dams? Issue of big dams? Big dams. See, there are moments <coughs> across the globe against the big dams. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there are two sides uh, to this issue. Uh, because big dams uh, invariably uh, lead to submergence of uh, a huge amount of land and most of them not they are the forest land. Like we are seeing in the case of King Bay Valley, it will submerge a huge part of Anna Tiger Reserve. Uh, so there is understanding greatly and opposition from the local people as well as from the environmental policy groups. But on the other hand, there are many benefits uh, for big dams, uh, like uh, irrigation, like power, uh, millions of people are without electricity access. So their needs could also not be known. So my view is that uh, uh, all these uh, cases, all these proposals should be decided on a case by case basis. And the cost to benefit ratio should be taken into account. If costs are more than benefit, then should not go ahead. No, no. The climate change is fast developing as the uh, number one uh, issue, problem for the whole of the world. Even there are uh, voices which say that climate change should be included in the agenda of the United Nations Security Council. And when we see massive uh, floods, rains and droughts, don't we think that the voice of the people who are against the big dams has got strengthened? Climate change, I put it simply, don't we think that the issue of climate change has uh, Question the very existence of big dams. Yes, sir. Definitely, it has added a very strong argument against uh, big dams, and especially from the developed countries. But uh, in developing countries like India, uh, other needs are to be taken care. Of. Definitely, the, if they, the big dams lead to submergence of forests, that leads to destruction of carbon sink, and that again adds to climate change. But uh, these voices are mostly uh, from developed countries. Uh, but uh, developed countries do not suffer from lack of electricity access. Uh, like we do, uh, around 300 million people in India are still without electric, uh, effective electricity access. So we do have to take care of their needs. And uh, irrigation is also important for our food security. Both of these issues should be taken uh, side by side. Do you think that from a common man's perspective, rather a layman's perspective, do you think that this massive climate change will alter the seismic activities also? Uh, yes sir, definitely. It will have a huge impact on seismic activities, uh, especially uh, through the melting of cryosphere. So uh, the cryosphere is a huge amount of uh, ice uh, that is uh, uh, deposited on the peak. And when that melts, the geostasy comes into effect. And that would uh, destabilize the plates, which would again lead to seismic threat. The rupee is having a free fall against the US dollar these days. How do you explain this issue to a common man? Why should a common man be worried if the value of the rupee is falling against the US dollar? Uh, the biggest impact uh, on us is uh, regarding the import because uh, when rupee, uh, the value of rupee falls against dollar and uh, foreign currencies, our imports become expensive. And the, uh, uh, regarding imports, we are overly dependent on uh, crude oil for import. 85% of our crude oil is imported. So it becomes even more expensive than what it, it is today. So uh, if uh, crude oil becomes expensive, everything, all the items of daily use, they become expensive, and transport also becomes expensive. So that will affect each and every. What is this forest menstruation is called? Uh, sir, forest menstruation uh, is an activity to measure uh, the forest, uh, uh, measurement of the height, the, uh, the diameter, and the growing stock in the forest for the purpose of forest valuation, for the purpose of uh, harvesting of forest, 
and uh, for the purpose, you know, the purpose of evaluation of a forestation activity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Oh, you are staying in Bangalore. Yes. Sir. How is the weather there today? Uh, sir, it is very pleasant. Uh, the temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius and there are clouds. But there was orange alert issued. Orange alert issued for Bangalore due to excessive rain. Why Why is Bangalore and yes. Karnataka facing so much of rain even before um, onset of monsoon? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, these are uh, partly uh, due to two reasons. Uh, partly it is due to orographic reasons because Bangalore is situated on, I mean, uh, situated very high. It is even higher than Dehradun if we calculate it from mean sea level. So when clouds uh, rise, uh, cumulonimbus clouds form and uh, due to uh, relative humidity uh, decreasing, uh, clouds shed their moisture. And the second is due to the pre-monsoon shower that comes from the Bay of Bengal. So uh, by the time they reach Bangalore, uh, the adiabatic lapse rate is uh, very high. So then they again shed their moisture over time. The experts also say it's uh, due to even the uh, cyclone which we which had in Bay of Bengal recently. Okay, coming to yes, sir. Have you heard of Miyawaki Forest? Yes, sir. I have. What is it? Can you tell me briefly what is a Miyawaki Forest? Yes, sir. Uh, it is a concept by a Japanese environmentalist. Uh, it is uh, a concept of urban forest. Or uh, I mean, it, it can be utilized everywhere. It is a concept of growing a forest in a very small area. So different varieties of trees, they are grown very close to each other uh, and uh, a, a very short forest is, uh, a kind of forest is created, which has many species in a very uh, short period. Do you think that could be the future for uh, having a good weather in urban uh, areas in India? Uh, yes sir, we can look at uh, that Miyawaki forest technique uh, for the forest, especially the smart cities and the green spaces we are building. But uh, there are some downsides also to those Miyawati forests and we have to take them into account. What are the downsides? Uh, sir, uh, it is about uh, the species also. I mean, they take a huge amount of uh, water to grow such a species. So they may lead to depletion of the groundwater in the urban area. Secondly, uh, some people, uh, some uh, uh, I mean, uh, some experts say that it is not very sustainable in the long term due to competition between the species. Okay, you are from uh, Nagore. Whenever I uh, yes. hear uh, Nagore, something strikes to everyone. Nagore is famous for what? Uh, sir, uh, I guess it is famous for uh, uh, the first thing is uh, the Panchayati Raj system, which yes. started from Nagore in 1959. Yes, I was referring to the same. Uh, recently, I mean, a few years back, Rajasthan had uh, educational qualification fixed for the members and chairpersons of Panchayat. Do you think that was the right decision? Uh, sir, in my personal opinion, that was not a right decision because it is not, uh, I mean, proper to penalize citizens for not having a qualification, uh, which, uh, providing which is the responsibility of the state. So if, if they did not have uh, educational qualifications, uh, it is not completely their fate. But don't so you think it is uh, not good to penalize? Don't you think we need educational qualification to get better policies and get better decisions from the ruling class? Uh, yes, sir. some amount of education definitely helps. But uh, I mean, there is uh, not hundred percent correlation between education and better policies and. There are some uh, uh, leaders, elected leaders, who are not very well educated, but they have a very good uh, connect with the people. Name a few. So they understand the uh, people's uh, needs. Name a few such leaders. Required. You know, name they a few such. The policies. Sorry to interrupt. Name a few such leaders who are not educationally very well qualified, but were a very good uh, leader and administrator. Sir, uh, Chaudhary Charan Singh comes to my mind. He was former Prime Minister of India. Any historic kings are you aware of? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sir, Akbar. Uh, Akbar was an illiterate. 
the greatest yeah. ruler of mughals akbar was not well educated and he was illiterate actually my last question yeah. to you is you have an interest in following international affairs have you heard of malakan dilemma malakan dilemma malakan dilemma Sir, I'm, uh, I'm not exactly aware of what it is, but I can take it. Yes. Yes, please. Go ahead. Sir, uh, it might be uh, related to the two points, uh, the state of Malacca. Correct. Uh, so, uh, it, which country has this dilemma? Sir? Which country has this dilemma, Malaccan dilemma? Sir, which country is... I think China has this dilemma. Yes, correct. Malacca state or to Solomon. What China is doing sir. to overcome this Malacca dilemma? Uh, sir, it has taken multiple steps. Uh, one is it is building a canal uh, similar to Panama Canal through Thailand uh, to bypass Malacca. And second is it is exploring the North Sea route uh, going to Bering Strait, Bering Strait. Okay, good, so fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, Vinod. So you are from Rajasthan. Yeah, yeah. Rajasthan is home to one of the most famous tiger reserve, Rantambore. So have you visited Rantambore Tiger Reserve? Uh, sir, I could not get the opportunity to visit Rantambore, but I have visited a couple of other national parks like Tadoba and everything. Okay, you have visited Tadoba in Maharashtra. Good. So have you seen how many vehicles are chasing each single tiger for a sighting in Tadoba? The case is even worse yeah, in yeah. Rantambore. Do you think it is a sustainable ecotourism model to allow so many people to uh, uh, chase a tiger and just to have a glance of it? Definitely not, sir. It, it is, I mean, it is very detrimental to uh, the wild animals because uh, they are not adapted to this form of uh, tourism. I mean, when people uh, gather in huge numbers, the gypsies, and they chase only the tigers, it, it affects the wild animals. So how do you think this issue can be resolved? See, people, unless you show them a tiger, they will not be environmentally uh, oriented. But if you show the tiger to so many people at once, tiger will be uh, at loss. So how do you handle the situation? Uh, sir, uh, I guess uh, Tadoba has done some work, uh, some improvements in this regard. Because uh, they have divided the Tadoba and the tiger reserve into five zones. And then, uh, I mean, they tried the tiger into a different zone. And then they limit the number of gypsies in each zone so that the load of tourists is divided and it is not too detrimental uh, for the tiger. Okay. Have you heard of Biodiversity Act? Yes, sir. So, what are the two main themes of Biodiversity Act? Uh, sir, uh, uh, the main theme of, of Biodiversity Act is uh, access and beneficial are the two main themes. The first is there should be uh, access to biodiversity resources to one and all. And secondly, there should be adequate benefit sharing with the local communities, the indigenous communities who have devised that biodiversity knowledge over the years. When is International Biodiversity Day? Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Thank you. So, what is your opinion on invasive alien species? I'm asking this because you see the state tree of Rajasthan is Khejri. Okay, that's a prosopis tree. And the similar tree, it's not exactly the same, but prosopis juliflora in Tamil Nadu is a uh, problematic tree. Okay, so what do you think the policy of government should be uh, with regards to invasive species? Whether removing invasive species completely is required or uh, uh, how to uh, how to go ahead with it? Uh, sir, our policy uh, invasive species are definitely a threat to the local ecosystem. This juju flora is a problem in Tamil Nadu as well as in Rajasthan. It has completely replaced many varieties because it is a I mean, prolific grower. So definitely they need to be removed, but a two-pound strategy could be adopted because it is very difficult to uh, remove prosopis juliflora because it is a very hardy plant. So uh, on one hand, to remove it, we can have uh, biological and chemical control, like uh, uprooting them and then applying kerosene to their stump. 
And on the other hand, we can also go for utilization of the existing fossil fuel during flora plants so that they don't grow back. So uh, in terms of utilization, fossil fuel during flora, uh, its pods can be used uh, to grind into uh, flow, uh, which is called in North America as misfit flow, and which is very nutritious. So it can be used as a food product. And no. it uh, can also be used as a charcoal. So what's the difference between kajiri and prosopis juliflora? What are the benefits of having kajiri, growing kajiri, compared to prosopis? Uh, sir, kajiri is, uh, kajiri is uh, uh, it is also known as kalpa bridge of the desert. So, uh, and it is a state tree of Rajasthan as well as Kalanda. So, kajiri tree has, uh, I mean, all the parts of that tree are uh, utilized. I mean, its bark uh, was used uh, by people during the famous uh, amino 1899 to boil and then eat. Then its uh, leaves are a very good, uh, very nutritious uh, fodder for the uh, for all types of livestock. Then its fruit, uh, the pods, they are a very delicious, uh, a delicacy uh, for the people of Rajasthan, which is called sandwich. Okay, uh, it, it sells in the market for somewhere around 800 to 900 per kg. And then uh, in agroforestry also, KGD is a very popular tree because it enhances the soil productivity because it has root module and nitrogen fixation. So it actually increases the crop. Uh, unlike the prosopis juliflora, which depletes water table, which uh, causes elidopathy and does not let other plants grow under. Okay. What is allelopathic effect? You just mentioned uh, so allelopathy. Allelopathy yeah. is, yes, sir. Uh, sir it is. Uh, I mean, a secretion of harmful chemicals by a plant to restrict the growth of other plants and uh, to reduce competition. Whether it increases the acidity or salinity of the soil? So it increases the acidity of the soil, if I'm not wrong. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. We know the, throughout the interview you have been very good. And uh, I'm confident because you have already faced two UPSC interviews. Already two interviews UPSC you have already faced. So this is not a big thing for you. Uh, most of the questions you have touched upon is uh, quite all right. Only one thing I was not satisfied with the answer which he asked about prosopis. Prosopis is a problem in some area. The other prosopis, which is khejri in your area, is not a problem. Uh, that's what he wanted uh, to is about. Him. It's not a problem. Because uh, yeah. that prosopis is prosopis cineraria, which is really uh, good for animals. It's a good fodder. The pods are good. It does not affect the agriculture yes. to that extent. Contrary to prosopis juliflora. Uh, prosopis juliflora, yes. you suggested that the eradication is very difficult because it is to be uprooted and kerosene is to be applied and all. Uh, all those methods are known for agricultural land and all, but everywhere we cannot practice this type of system. So just uh, to make you know that the eradication of prosopis juliflora also has to be very selective and it has to be done with great intelligence rather than clearly telling that it's very bad and should be removed from everywhere. I find you very good, you'll do very well. All the best. Thank you. Mm. Binod, your interview is very nice. Your answers, Thank you. very, very good. And uh, uh, regarding uh, this uh, tiger reserves, uh, we have 52 as reported by the newspapers. You, was, you said 53? Sir, I will read more on this that. This Rambar Bistari is the 52nd king. 51st was uh, Sri Viliputur in Tamil Nadu last year. Okay. Last year, it was the last. Then 50th one was, I think, coming in uh, Onanjal. So, so we, um, just see what is the number. We don't have 53. I will read more on that. Okay. okay. But international affair, you are very thorough. Thank you. Thank you. Vinod, they are really good. I wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Uh, Vinod, as all members have pointed out, you are doing excellently well. I really wish and uh, hope that you get into service this year because you are doing very, quite well. I mean, if you really want me to find some uh, suggestion is, uh, since you have a hobby of following international affairs, it's too dynamic and very open. You can read a little more on that. That's the only suggestion which I can give. If not, you are doing excellently well. Thank you very much.
you know same thing from me you have done really well and uh, even the technical concepts from a layman's perspective from just from an optional perspective what you answered was very good my only suggestion would be no one has asked any question on your technical background that is electrical engineering so be prepared with it as well because in my forest service interview the first question asked was faraday's laws okay so don't leave it out be prepared with that that's the only thing otherwise otherwise you did very good all the best thank you all the best all the best thank you it was a great interview great moderation thank you